Hi, Mike Hartman with Waco Aircraft Corporation. How's everyone doing out there? Welcome to Oshkosh yet again. We're going to talk about the Waco YMF-5. These are produced at our factory in Battle Creek, Michigan. These are brand new production airplanes. These are built on an STC 1935 type certificate. So these are all new. We're rolling them off right now as we speak. The originals, as I said, were 1935. And we've made some changes since then to make the airplane a little more manageable. We'll start walking around the aircraft here and I'll show you some of the things. Inside, if you stop by our booth here at Oshkosh, you'll be able to see a wing. And inside, we don't have any covering on the wing and you can actually see how that wing is made. It's made of Sitka spruce. And I often used to say I hate it when we have to cover these wings because underneath them, it's absolute artwork. So we could show you that wing a little bit later. So just like any other biplane, we've got landing wires, flying wires, drag anti-drag wires inside of the wing, lots of wires. These are our landing wires here, and these that come up are our flying wires. That helps us with rigging, and it's also a lot of strength with the airplane. So we walk along the wing, we come to our end strut. Once again, support, strength, and it's called an end strut because it's shaped like an end. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. One of the neat things about a Waco biplane is they all have four ailerons. They're very light in the ailerons and we do get a pretty decent roll rate out of them. So that lightness is almost like power steering. So you can see we have an upper aileron and a lower aileron. The torque tube for the aileron runs through the bottom wing, which comes up to our slave strut. And all this does is operate that top aileron. The wings are covered with Seconite fabric, and then we use a paint called Exalta. So our system works really well. The paint has a flex agent in it. It almost looks wet all of the time. It's a two-part process, and it works really good and also resists cracking. One of the things that was done with the F5 throughout the years, even when these started going back into production, the originals, you would have seen fabric all the way down the side of the aircraft. However, we've metalized it over the years to about back behind the headrest here, and then it goes into fabric again. We're really not adding much weight to the aircraft. We are adding strength. A lot of these airplanes are used for ride hauling and such, and it just keeps the sides of the airplane a little more durable for us and a little stronger. This aircraft, as I said, is very light in the ailerons, maybe a little bit heavier in the elevator. Very positive elevator feel. They are counterbalanced elevators, and you know it's there. It's a good, strong, solid feel with the aircraft, along with the lightness of those ailerons, makes it very nice flying. The aircraft has a big rudder on it. This helps a lot when we're landing questions about the tail wheel down there. Is it locking? Is it steerable? Does it just caster? This one is steerable or it casters. So when we get ready to push it backwards into the hangar, we'll disengage it and then we have a free castering tail wheel. Other than that, we can taxi around pretty much anywhere we need to, take off and land with the tail wheel engaged in steering. So that steerable tail wheel coupled with the nice big rudder actually helps the aircraft a lot on takeoff off and landing. It's very effective. <laughs> the airplane is a very stable airplane on the ground compared to like you'd see in the 1930s. The reason being is because of that steerable tail wheel and that big rudder and also we've raised that tail post. So this wheel is the fuselage is a lot higher off the ground than you would have seen on something a long time ago that lifts the tail up a little bit more. Also, the main landing gear are a little bit shorter than original by about three inches. 
and the fuselage is lengthened about six inches. What all of this does is it gives the aircraft a shallower deck angle. So instead of sitting on the ground like this, we're sitting on the ground a little shallower. And what that helps us do, it helps us see a little bit better. The airplane's a little more stable on the ground with that extra length and, sh and shallower deck angle. So here's the big question. Everybody always asks, do we wheel land or do we three point these airplanes? The way this airplane sits and the way it was designed, it likes a tail low wheel landing. So we'll usually just let it settle down on the mains and let the tail kind of start coming down on its own. We'll follow it down with the stick. Once the tail wheel touches, then we'll hold it back. Can we three point it? Yes, I three point it. As an instructor, I do teach both ways of flying this airplane. So it does equally. They're both good, but it likes that three point, or excuse me, it likes that wheel landing a little bit better. So we fly these airplanes all over the country, and another question we get a lot about is baggage. Can we carry a lot of baggage in the aircraft? Back here we have a locking baggage compartment. I lift this up, we've got 70 pounds, 75 pounds, excuse me, max baggage. And that's enough room to stick a suitcase into, extra oil, whatever we need. If we're traveling by ourselves, we got plenty of room. We're gonna talk more about room here in a few minutes. So I've got plenty of baggage space back in the back. It's all pretty much what you need. Okay, how do we get into the aircraft? Pretty straightforward, pretty simple getting into the back seat here, the rear cockpit. I step up, stay on the black, and I simply stand on the wing. Right here, we have a nice kick step. This one's a little bit wider in case you got big feet like me, you can get your foot in there. Also, there's a handle here that we can hang on to. Gives us a little bit more support. So what I like to do is go ahead and put my foot right inside that kick step. Then it's just like getting on a horse. You could put some weight on the windscreen. We also have a pilot assist handle should you need it. And I'm just gonna swing my foot over and step right down on the furniture. You're allowed to do that in a biplane. Next thing's next. Okay, so here we are inside the aircraft. Now a lot of people are thinking, oh my gosh, look at all that equipment. Well, yeah, this one does have a lot more equipment in it as far as avionics go. Over here we have a Garmin 750, backed with a Garmin 650. Here is a JPI engine monitor. And then we have two G5s in front of us. So. If you wanted to shoot an IFR approach in this airplane, you could do it. Backing all that up, we do have your standard steam gauges. There they are. Down here is my stick and also my rudder pedals. So, very roomy and spacious cockpit. Over here I have my battery switches, alternator, starter, the key to start it up. And over here I've got all my light switches. Down here are my fuel valves. And those work by either pulling them out or pushing them in for on. I even have a cup holder here. That's pretty nice. Over here on the throttle, throttle quadrant, pretty standard mixture, throttle. And then we have a carb heat knob. Trim. And my trim indicator. And we also talked about that tail wheel engage disengage that is right down here so right now the tail wheel is disengaged in order to get it into steering I pull it back and the aircraft is then able to steer with our rudder pedals pretty straightforward cockpit and that's the office so to get out of the airplane pretty straightforward once again I could put weight right on this windscreen pull myself up and then once again I'll stand right up on the furniture now I could use that same step to get in and get out, but I got longer legs. So what I like to do is grab this handle, lean back, lift my left leg over, grab my other handle, and I'll just step right out of the airplane. Now, the F5 has a lower top wing to it, so getting into it, if you're just looking at it, seems like it'd be pretty difficult, but we have a door and an easy way to get in. So, I'm going to stand on the wing first and open my door. 
I'm a bigger guy, and we got a lot of bigger people that do fly these airplanes. One of the things about the Waco is we could put two people in the front seat, and almost put two people my size in the front seat, so a lot of room up there. So getting in, as you can see, I don't want to get in like this, because then everybody's all whopper jawed and it's very difficult. The easiest way to get in, face the pilot, left knee on the seat, and jump right in the cockpit. All right, so up front, we don't have too much up here in the passenger compartment, but we do have two headset jacks, co-pilot and passenger. Up front, we also have rudder pedals and a stick. So usually if I'm flight instructing in the airplane, this is where I'm sitting, just a throttle up front. We don't have the mixture or the carb heat. Here's our door, and we have dual seat belts. The inside of this airplane is very roomy. Right now I'm kind of sitting on the right side of the airplane, and I got plenty of room down to the left for another passenger. So getting out is just as easy as getting in. I'm gonna kind of just reverse the process. I'm gonna turn around and kneel on the seat facing the pilot, open my door from the outside, once the door's open, just going to bring my leg out, step on the black, easy as that. All right, let's talk about the engine and propeller. The propeller on this is an MT wood prop made with nine laminates. They're beautiful propellers, and they're a more modern made wooden prop. Back in the old days when you saw a propeller, the metal on the leading edge was basically folded over the wood and then riveted in. The good thing about the MT propellers is this is a separate piece, so in case it takes a nick or some damage, we can actually repair it. Behind the propeller is a 300 horse Jacobs radial engine. 300 horsepower, we've got seven cylinders, burning anywhere between 14 to 16 gallons an hour, depending on how we fly it. These engines are done by air repair in Cleveland, Mississippi. Pete Jones down there redoes these engines. The Jacobs is a wonderful engine. We love it. It's been powering these airplanes for a long time, and hopefully it continues in the future. 